this video, I'll be showing you how to do a typical BACnet integration by discovering and adding devices to the connector's tree. Following that, I will show you how to get discovered BACnet data points into the Fin Equipment tree. First, in the Open Project, click on the App Launcher button on the top left corner of the UI. Then, in the System Integrator App section, click on the DB Builder icon to launch the DB Builder. This opens the DB Builder app. In the Tree sidebar, I have opened the Equip Tree and the Connectors Tree. There are other database record type trees, but I have chosen to only show the Equip and Connector Trees. Under the Equip Tree, I have already added a site and a floor. Shortly, I will also add some equipment in order to hold the data points from the BACnet devices. Under the connectors tree, there are BACnet and Haystack connector types. Other connector types could be enabled, but we will only be using BACnet in this exercise. Expanding the BACnet connector tree, there is a Discover node. Click on Discover. There are Discover settings that allow you to filter and manage the way that you discover BACnet devices. I will leave all those in their default settings and click on the Discover button. Upon Discover, Finn issues a standard BACnet WHOIS message and listens for other devices to send back their IAM responses. And those that do get listed as discovered devices in the top pane. This particular Discover found 15 VAVs and 3 AHUs. Any of the discovered devices can be brought into the project database under the connectors list by selecting them and either clicking the add button or by drag and drop method. I will shift click all of the devices and drag and drop them into the added devices pane on the bottom half of the discovered view. Now we can see all of the newly added devices in the bottom added devices pane as well as under the BACnet connectors tree on the left. Now, when I click on the BACnet tree itself, I can see a list of all the devices that have been added, as well as their addressing scheme and available communication details. Now, if we wanted to get the data from these devices into our equipment, we need to have a place for the data to live inside the equipment tree. Data points typically live inside of an equip, so I will click on the floor, and on the bottom left I will click on the Add button and select the Add Equip option. So I want this initial equipment to represent HU1 and be my cloning template. So I will name it HU1 so that the name matches. Now on the floor, I have HU1 equip. I will select that in the tree to bring up its properties. I need some marker tags to define what this equipment is and what it does. By default, it only has the equip marker tag. Following the rules of haystack tagging, I'm going to add in a few additional tags. I need the HU tag, the HVAC tag, and the VAV zone tag. So on the right hand side of the marker tag section, I'll click on the add button and start typing HU, comma, HVAC, comma, VAV zone with a capital Z. Notice that when I hit the check mark, it will add each word between the commas as its own individual tag. Now I can hit save at the bottom to save all of the edits that I have done on the HU1 equipment record. Now I want to pull the data from the HU1 connector into the HU1 under the equipment tree. So under the connectors backnet tree, I'll select the HU1 connector and select the discover points option at the bottom. Now all of the points that are in the HU1 discovered points section were pulled from the connector. This is where you would normally go in and pick and choose which points you'd like to add into the database. Since I want to add in all of the points, I will shift select every point and drag and drop them from the discovered pane into the HU1 equip. Now if you had the current context already on HU1, you could also just click the add button to add it right into your current context, which is currently HU1. Both ways work just as well for adding points into the database. So it's really based on preference. In this case, I'll just go ahead and drag and drop the points from the discovered points pane right into the HU1 equipment under the equip tree menu and hit apply. This will bring up the batch record editor. As you can see in this tool, there are three columns, 
The column on the left shows all of the points in this particular library record. In the middle column are all of the points we've just added to the HU1 from the connectors. And on the right hand column are all of the points that have been matched between the library column and the DB record column in the middle. The purpose of this tool is to allow the software to automatically match and add tags using the library record points as the models for how the points in the database should be tagged. If the points in the database can be matched to the points in the library, either by complete name or if the name of the DB point is contained in the library, the software will automatically match up the points so that the user doesn't have to. None of these points matched with the library points, but they could still be manually matched. If I could find in the library the point that is the model for the point that is in the database, I can manually select and match those points. For instance, let's say we wanted to match our RAT point to a return air temp point in the library. First, I would find return air temp in the library list. I could select the library point and then select the add button for the RAT point, which would then add them to the matched column. Now I could also use a filter where I could do return, so all of the points in the library that have return in them will show. So if I had a return fund, I could match that up manually. I could also do discharge. And now in Haystack, there's no such thing as a supply air. So in this case, I would match my supply airflow to the discharge airflow from my library and match it up. I could also get the discharge air temp and match that with my supply air temp. Discharge fan and match that with the supply fan. And I could continue to match them manually one at a time in such that if I hit apply now, it would rename the points based on the names I have in the library if I leave this set to yes. If I wanted to, I could also replace the marker tags and I could also replace the history tags. And that is what I normally want to do when using this tool. But in this case, I want to show you another method of using this tool by having a library custom made that's based on the way I expect the points to be brought in from this particular controller. So I'm going to cancel this function, leaving the points to be the same way they came in by default. But then I will select A21. Using the Tools menu, Create Batch Records, I can upload or import a saved record from before. Choose a file, and here is my FinForest Spin Resources Library and my FinForest Spin Points Library. Having chosen that library, making sure it is a point library, and clicking on Upload. Now I've brought in a custom library to deal with the points the way I expected to see them from a specific piece of equipment. Now I can go here from HU1 Essentials to the Site HU1 tab and select the Open Record Library option on the bottom, which brings up the Batch Record Editor tool from earlier. Except notice this time, all of the points got matched automatically based on the, their name being contained within the name in the library. Now there are two record libraries, and if I select just the Fin for a Spin Points library, you'll see a very short list of predefined records here. All of the records match, so all I have to do is hit apply, and the records will get updated with their new names and tags. As you can see, if we select one of our points here, it has all the unique tags brought in by the library. So using the batch record editor, I was able to tag all of my points automatically with one quick click of a button. Now I can make this the current context, show points for it by clicking this icon here which brings up a grid for my HU1 and even allows me to view the data live. So that is one way you can bring in the database points onto a single piece of equipment. Now using the clone tool, I can tell the software that connector HU2 and HU3 is the same as HU1 and I would like to bring in those data points in as well. So by clicking on the BACnet node under the connectors tree, I can select HU2 and HU3 and then bring up my clone menu by clicking on the clone option towards the bottom. Since HU1 is my current context in the navigation menu, the clone feature automatically grabs the HU1 as our template and then it also automatically grabs the predominant connector in that equipment, which is the HU1, as our base URL. So once we hit create, it will use our template and base URL to clone to HU2 and HU3 based on those exact settings. 
When I refresh the floor, now you'll see that I have an A22 and an A23 as well. All of the points have been renamed and they are all live. If I go to the points view and select live, you'll see all of the data points coming in and updating from A22 and the same for A23. So all I did was set up H21, and by using the clone feature, the software set up H22 and H23 for me. All I have to do now is make the names what I want by deleting the fin first spin off the beginning of those, hitting enter and save. And now I have three equips on my floor and only had to set up one of them. And that is how you do a backnet integration with live data into equips and with all the haystack tagging included. Thanks for watching.